All right, good morning. It's so great to have you here. Global health has really been at the forefront of public conversation, especially for these past few years. We have been at it for 10 years now. Omar, I remember when you first came as CEO, and I think it was the first strategic planning process that you had a template for soliciting ideas across the business for business model innovations to address underserved communities. I don't know if you remember that, but I'm curious what inspired you to do that. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know if I remember the exact chart, <laughs> but, but uh, what I do know, and uh, it's always been my goal, was to impact uh, uh, healthcare, uh, improve healthcare for people around the world. And one thing that I recognized a long time ago is that there are more people in uh, what is called the emerging world rather than the developed world, and just simply fact. And if you want to uh, impact healthcare in a big way, you've got to find a way to access uh, th those people. And one of the things that attracted me to Medtronic right in the very beginning was that the statement of improving health for people, for individuals, was the core of the company. And how could we not then address and try to do something about the lives of the majority of the people in the world uh, if that's the mission of the company? So that's where that started. And so in all the charts, uh, I remember there was a triangular chart where we had uh, developed countries and emerging countries and underserved. And, and, and then we took different strategies for each because uh, there were different uh, both economic situations as well as the local infrastructure that was, that was available. So that, that's where that started. Yeah, Jeff, you were involved in that from the very beginning as well when mm -hmm. we had all these volunteer teams across the different businesses. What do you recall, like the energy and really how people were approaching this new challenge that Omar had given us? Well, I do remember the chart, you, the triangle, we call it the pyramid, <laughs> and we call it the bottom of the pyramid. And, 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 and I remember that, you know, look, you know, our company at Medtronic, but other healthcare and uh, uh, technology companies focused on healthcare are designing their products and therapies for the infrastructure that they know, which tends to be developed market infrastructure. And then you, you get into the emerging markets and they don't have that infrastructure. So our, our products and therapies are just much less pervasive, right? And, and, and I remember, you know, Omar, you know, identified this and said, look, we need to have specific ideas if we're really going to get at uh, helping the, the, these billions of people that fall into that bottom of that triangle and don't don't have access to that infrastructure, imaging equipment, et cetera, et cetera. And so what ideas do you have? And it was, you know, I think it was a, the business teams in Medtronic were caught by surprise. Well, what, what, what do you mean? We're, we got a lot of work to do just in these developed markets. So I, I, but when people really started to think about it, there was a lot of energy around it. And then ideas came out uh, and, and there were some pretty exciting ideas. Uh, and and we, we went after a number of those. And I remember there was a lot of energy. Some of those didn't work out, right, you know, with best intentions. But others, years later, have had some success and have evolved into new models that are really exciting. But I, I remember that initial excitement was really high because it was a new concept. And then, and then we went at it, and it's been a long journey. Uh, but, but you know, we are in a much, much better place right now. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Carol, you got to see that firsthand in your very first few days at Medtronic. You had joined a big healthcare technology company, and you found yourself in a not very technology-friendly place. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Ruchika, and you are actually one of the first people that I met at Medtronic, and that was a really memorable trip. It was, um, actually, I think it was this month in 2013, and it was a Medtronic board meeting, and we were in Delhi, and we had a, a field visit to, I mean, it was described and still is as Shruti, um, which in that field visit was in a very low resource environment. It was the bottom of the pyramid. You know, how do we tackle some of the challenges that uh, patients around the world face in a, in a low resource environment? And um, while I was very new to healthcare, just a couple of weeks in, I was very familiar in previous experience with emerging markets and how important it is for any company, no matter what business you're in, to truly understand deeply insights of consumers or patients in whatever market you're operating in. 
and then um, very clearly address those insights. And what I was struck by um, when we were, we were talking about and in Delhi visiting some of the clinics that we had set up with Shruti was exactly how you had done that. So one insight I recall was that you know patients in that particular community would not be comfortable going outside of their immediate community to seek health care. And as a result of that, pretty straightforward ear infections were left undiagnosed, resulting in hearing loss over time. And you know, I, I just remember thinking, wow, you know, what, what an amazing insight. And then how you engaged and trained community health workers to be embedded in that community that, uh, you know, patients trusted as a resource. The other, the other insight and observation was just how important it was to be able to have um, technology that was minimally viable, mobile, to be able to do the diagnosis and then enter mobile phone as otoscope. And I was just amazed. I was thinking about the billions of patients just within, well, millions, just within Delhi that could benefit um, from the way we were thinking about addressing the unique barriers that people were facing. And I was just so inspired. And here we are, you know, nine years later, and I think you've, uh, you've touched almost a, a million patients with just, you know, that particular business model. Yeah, I mean, in those early years, I'm curious for all of you, the teams, I mean, we didn't really know how to approach this. It was so different in terms of how we do R&D and every other aspect of our business. Your coaching and guidance was instrumental. Um, how did you think about that, like separating your approach from how you would look at the normal business and how you looked at our teams? Well, let me take a crack at that because um, there was a lot of learning. I recall very clearly that uh, when we started this process, there was actually a lot of uh, reception and people did come up with ideas. But the vast majority of ideas really didn't go anywhere. And the reason for that is because Medtronic in the end is a company that deals with people in relatively later stage of their disease state, where an implant has to be put in or some you know, really acute action has to be taken. Um, and in the emerging world that we were going after, to do that, uh, you know, that was not the primary need. The need was there, but not the primary need for two reasons. First, the infrastructure wasn't there. And if you have to create the infrastructure first, that's just too long a journey. And, and second, in the end of the day, there are more people at the earlier stage than the late stage. And so we weren't really addressing the vast majority of those people. Now, the one that came out, though, is the example that Carol gave. The Shruti program is the only one where a business unit, where their true uh, business model was around late stage, actually came up with a linkage from the late stage to the early diagnos diagnostics that was necessary to identify those late stage patients, but in the interim, created a simple solutions for those earlier stage patients as well. That's why that one took off. And Although I'm saying it now, it took a while for this logic to kind of settle in. Uh, but what also became obvious is for the others, you know, that line of sight wasn't that black and white and people really weren't thinking about it uh, till you came up with, uh, with the program for, um, you know, hypertension and, and diabetes. And, and that was a little more difficult because the acute or the uh, later stage solution we didn't really have at that degree. But and so it required a little evolution. Uh, but I think that learning, uh, it's happened over four or five years. This didn't happen overnight. But I do think the Shruti uh, example, we uh, and Jeff and I actually worked together on this. I remember at the World Economic Forum, we talked about it. We tried all kinds of things on that one to, uh, ex to expand it. And we learned a lot. We learned a lot about how to scale these. Um, and then when you came up with your idea, you know, again, not consciously, but because we learned a lot, I think that helped. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? It's been years of trying these things. How do you keep the patients and say, let's keep figuring this out? Well, uh, perseverance is probably a better word than patience. You know, I don't know that I'm ever patient, but but the perseverance here, one, it's 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 tied to our mission, right? And and um, 
like Omar pointed out, there's billions of people in the, the world that don't have access to our existing products and therapies. And so how do we, how do we change that? It's going to take a concerted effort. And and then, you know, what's what's motivated me is this concept beyond the mission is this how do you make this scalable and sustainable? And and just that that bar is a high bar. Scalable and sustainable in a low resource environment is really hard. And so that um, was a real motivator as well as the mission. And that high bar is what, you know, kept us, you know, okay, we're re putting more resources into this, trying new things. Uh, and, and I think, you know, where we are now is on a much better place where it's, I think we have the potential here to, we're starting to see the scale and I think it's also sustainable. Uh, you know, we've moved away from like these point solutions that we see. Uh, so many other uh, organizations uh, are, are, you know, reliant on point solutions. Your approach, which we can get into, it, it, take, it, it works with the ecosystem. Uh, and the other thing is uh, I don't think it, anything can be sustainable if it relies on charity. You know, we're looking at our philanthropic grants from our foundation as seed equity, right? We're not looking for a return in financial you know, but at some point, this, this, your organization, I do think can get to a cash flow break even where we're reinvesting. Uh, and that path is very exciting to me is, okay, what do we got to do to actually get to the scale, to get to that so you can self-fund? So that scalable, sustainable and scalable, keeping that goal, and then what it's not, right? It, it can't rely on charity forever. And, and looking at our philanthropic uh, contributions more as seed equity. That, and then you, you and your team figured out, I, I think, a solution that's showing a lot of promise that, that can live up to those two things. Yeah, it took us a while to get there, just even structurally to be able to support this kind of work within a public corporation like Medtronic. Mm -hmm. And there were lots of steps along the way. And I think, Carol, you were involved in a lot of the structural pieces as well. I'm curious, really, from all of you, how you thought about that, like protecting this when there were so many competing demands that from your chair you saw. You know, I, I'll, I'll take a stab at this, but just, you know, my observation and, um, it, you know, if you think back nine years ago in the beginning of Shruti, that began in the context of, a, I'll call it a traditional Medtronic core business. And then somewhere along the way, I, I'm losing track of when that was. When that was. I think all of us here um, kind of collectively concluded that in order, to Jeff's point, to, to sustain uh, kind of the entrepreneurial, innovative approach <clears throat> that, that really resulted in Shruti, you know, kind of protecting it and not 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 um, allowing, let's call it the the traditional aspects of of running um, a part of a Medtronic business get conflated with what's required um, in this social business. And I do think that was one of the reasons for success. Number one, number two, um, we used to have talent and people who were just perhaps passionate about the topic. Uh, which is great, but maybe lacked some of the entrepreneurial skill set and the need to be able to quickly test, innovate, fail, and then get back on the horse and try a different avenue. And so the combination of the passion for the for the topic and, and really wanting to impact um, healthcare in a, a meaningful way, but have an entrepreneurial skill set or a domain expertise that enables that. And so I think part of the protection of Medtronic Labs um, from maybe some of the more traditional aspects of, of Medtronic was an important success factor. The skill sets of the team and, and I think, Ruchika, some of the culture that you created within labs, which is reinforcing you know, speed and agile decision-making, human-centered design, really understanding needs of patients, putting that all together and encouraging trial and error, but doing it fast, and then seeking advice and counsel from domain experts externally, too. Yeah, as you, as you guys have, over the years, we went from, 
you know, like these volunteers that were doing this on nights and weekends in addition to their day job, to then, you know, kind of p putting this within more dedicated resources within our foundation, but getting a sliver of the funding to having a dedicated organization, un, you know, um, even outside of our foundation with, with mater significant funding on an annual basis. And the reason we've moved down that continuum is all the things that Carol's mentioning. The, the ideas have, you know, through the perseverance, the ideas have evolved and advanced and showing promise. And the group, you and your leadership team, have evolved in the way Carol identified here is, and, and uh, kind of have your, a way of working that's more entrepreneurial. And, and is that as our confidence build? And we've moved down this continuum. And, uh, you know, I think once we made that last move, that's where you started to see the scale. You know, I think um, the, the other two or three sort of minor tweaks to that that I'd add in. First, uh, to Jeff's point, you know, the, there was a uh, foundation contribution. And so we leveraged that and took some of that and put it into labs. But uh, if I recall, uh, again, the sequence of events, um, one of the main problems with Shruti was that uh, it wasn't addressing a core disease area. And so although it was still a lot of people and a lot of children, you know, health ministers and so on didn't really uh, catch on to that because it wasn't the primary thing that people were complaining about. Uh, and so it could never get true visibility and scale, but we kept working it and, and learning. Uh, and this whole model of transferring to be uh, uh, essentially the first labs, uh, first project within labs, within the foundation, I think we took that as the example. But then you came in and you started this more general one. And I recall very clearly two events that uh, took us to where we're going. You know, the first was um, you did in a, I clearly remember the meeting even, where you reported the hypertension results. And I remember Rick Koons was with me and he didn't want to believe it. And he, <laughs> you had to show him the data and he dug into it and you stood up to it and the data was true. That, that through the efforts that you were making in the initial prototype phases somewhere in Africa, I think it was, and uh, that you were getting those hypertension results. The second meeting, which happened sometime after that, was that there was a, um, a parallel effort going on to address the same disease state, but through an external organization, which the foundation was doing as well, because the foundation was also funding external companies. And I remember a meeting where we looked at the return yeah. on investment for you versus the foundation. And it was a no-brainer right. that the return was an order of magnitude higher uh, through you. And so from that point, I think you were there with yeah, Jeff no, on that. Yeah, you remember that, okay. And Carol, you yeah, too. And absolutely. we clearly remember, we've got to go there somehow. Okay? Yeah. But we had, to, we had to weave ourselves out of uh, what we had historically because we had external commitments and all kinds of things. And this was such a new concept, no one really understood it. Uh, so it took a little bit of work. And your leadership there, uh, Richika, was vital. But I also think, I mean, us collectively thinking about how to do it, being committed to it, uh, made all the difference. And uh, I, I can tell you that, uh, and then and Jeff has pushed it even further and more aggressively, saying this is what foundation is going to be, or charitable, you know, we'll still, but this is the main purpose. Uh, with the very decisive thinking, I, I, I think is fabulous. And, and it really gives us the opportunity to move the needle here through you. Yeah, no, we're at an amazing inflection point with labs right now, with the countries we're operating in across sub-Saharan Africa, Asia, and even starting to look at the US now. Uh, Omar, you had a chance to come to Kenya yeah. and engage with a lot of the public health and the ministry officials. What was your take on it as you think about the ecosystem and the difference we can make with healthcare? Yeah, well, um, you know, first, um, I was really impressed and, and, uh, and I learned a lot uh, about how it, ex you know, it's one thing listening to charts and pages and uh, those are good, but until you actually go and see it yourself, you don't really get the same you know, clarity of, uh, of, of what's really going on and how it actually works. And you can ask people uh, below the managerial level uh, real questions. I mean, do you really understand this? Does it really work? Where do you go? All these things. And, and again, those are not like 
statistically significant sort of sampling, but it's data points which, <laughs> which, which do make a difference. And so the Kenya visit really showed me how this would work. Uh, and uh, also the limitations, uh, and uh, limitations meaning uh, the specific conditions in Kenya, which is a relatively low density sort of country compared to the rest of the world, which, which is fine, you just need to recognize that. Uh, how their villages are and, you know, they're set up. Uh, I was really impressed with their government, actually, and their interest and their willingness to scale this across the whole country. Uh, so that whole uh, looking at it, in, at, at it in real life, and also probing and sort of really testing whether the software platform was really going to work. Is it sustainable? Are you really going to get the results? Uh, and at what level people understood that? Uh, all of that, uh, to me, was a, a learning experience. And it, it encouraged me and gave me the confidence to go out to even more people and talk about it. Uh, it's not a matter of me not believing you, but it's a matter of having the conviction to talk about it in, in depth so I can give real examples which come, come out much more genuine if I've actually seen it myself. Um, the other thing that came out, which I have to mention, is that, and I've thought about it before, but this example, which I've mentioned many times before, but th that's the first time I started talking about it sort of relatively publicly, is the fact that uh, I give this cell phone analogy where, uh, you know, 30 or 40 years ago, in the emerging world, uh, phone lines were not available. And, um, you know, and you couldn't get phone lines because uh, to, to get a phone line would take like years of application and you just didn't have it. The cell phone uh, completely transformed that. The cell phone, everybody has a cell phone. And the cell tower and all that stuff kind of did that. And in many ways, I, I really cannot get away from the fact that I see the analogy here, that doctors and training of doctors, which take four years and all of that, which the conventional healthcare system depends on, will permanently limit access to healthcare in the emerging world because you'll never get that many doctors. And, and that's a limitation similar to the, to the landline uh, limitation. And the example that we have today in your model, where we use the cloud in a ubiquitous fashion, and uh, this connectivity will only increase. It's not perfect today, but it'll increase, and you know, it's just a matter of time before it's completely ubiquitous. Uh, I find this is a very equivalent example to what the cell phone did to communication. Your approach can potentially do to healthcare, and that's a massive statement. And uh, that's what excites me about it more than anything else. And I think um, you, know, you have everything there for us to be able to do that, and if you do that, uh, you know, this is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jeff, your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I don't want to repeat what he said, but I, I look, I agree with, with what Omar was saying there. Um, and, and, and like I said, I'm excited about it because I think it's, it's scalable and sustainable. And, and you're, you're, it's not a point solution. You're, you're, you're leveraging a couple of ecosystems. You're leveraging the community health workers, which are different in each community, We're only, even in the U.S. How, how it works in one community in the U.S. is completely different than how it works in another. Uh, and we're leveraging those community health care workers. There's a, there's a digital component of this that Omar mentioned, the, the, I'll call it a handheld EMR, that we're storing the data in the cloud and making that connectivity. But then you're also tapping into an innovation ecosystem of, of the uh, healthcare industry, whether it be the pharma companies or the medical device companies that are very focused on this, you know, that are very, we can, and you mentioned glo uh, at the onset of this discussion how global health is really the awareness of the need and the disparities has, has, really, uh, has really dramatically increased. And, you know, not just the, the leadership of the companies and governments, but individuals uh, are more committed to this. Uh, and, and employees want to work for a company that's involved in this. So th this is urging these companies to get involved. So things that, that we couldn't do on our own, like, uh, you know, the, the, the pharma solutions here, the, 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 the medicines that are necessary for this solution, that's not what we do. And you have these other players coming to the table uh, and, 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 and participating into this solution, and not just you know, us and our medical device expertise. So I really, uh, I, I'm really excited about it. The timing is good too. You, just as this is getting to what I would call not maturity, but an inflection point, the solution here, the lab solution, you're also, society is very focused on it, and you have the, uh, the, the necessary ecosystem stepping up to support. Mm -hmm. 
uh, technology, whether it be pharma, biotech, med tech, community healthcare workers, and then to your point, the technology, the digital technology has gotten to a low cost point and a scalable, we can, you know, have a handheld EMR basically to use a U.S. Mm -hmm. vernacular. So it's, the timing is good and I really feel we have an opportunity that um, you know, we can't let slip through our hands. So when you and Carol, uh, Carol came to me, I remember said, look, you know, we want to shift how the focus of the foundation. And I'm just like, this is a brilliant idea. It's time to be decisive, you know, and, you know, move with speed and decisiveness. We talk about in the Medtronic. We made the decision like right away. I didn't need any more data. I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. And, and we moved. And so, look, uh, you know, we're excited, and I know there's a lot of uh, people around Medtronic and in and, and, and the healthcare ecosystem that are excited. Most importantly, there's a lot of patients out there, a lot of people out there that uh, are going to you know, benefit from this. So, building on Jeff's point, I, I, the inflection point is an exciting one. You know, growth is good. So, you, you've, you've done a lot of testing and learning and failing and iterating. And now we are at that inflection point, and the biggest question is, how do we scale? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where you've been focused, uh, Ruchika, and I know Omar, you too, on on just on pressure testing, mm -hmm. pressure testing the people assumptions. How do we scale the community health workers? How do we scale the the processes? And then ultimately, um, and really important for us is the technology component. And, and having the external advisors with domain expertise who are so passionate on the topic and are willing to donate their time to help us pressure test to get to scalability, I think is another really important ingredient um, in just reflecting back on so many years and where we are right now. Kind of building, um, Carol, on what you were saying is, these are big problems to solve in the world and we can't do this alone. Uh, the reason to join this global health equity network is really again to help rally and convene players across not just the healthcare sector but technology as well as other players and public health and ministries of health to come together to scale these solutions because we fundamentally have to bring um, build the infrastructure for the future. So as we are joining this framework, like where do you see the role of Medtronic and leading that work and uh, the importance of being part of a group like that. Is that, you want me to answer that question? Anyway, okay. <laughs> well, look, I, I, I think joining, uh, look, we met, mentioned our, we're at an inflection point. I think we have something here that is, um, for lack of a better word, ready for prime time, meaning uh, bringing in other partners. We haven't solved everything yet, all right? It's not done, but we're at an inflection point. And, and joining, uh, you know, the World Economic Forum, this, this, this organization within the World Economic Forum, I think is going to get us that visibility uh, this this solution, the lab solution, the visibility that it needs to bring in more partners, to bring in more stakeholders, to help us continue to evolve and and learn and improve and scale. And I think the timing is is, is good now. I think we're 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 ready for this. Uh, and you know our, you know it's um, again we don't have all the answers and we we need help. Uh, and there's some really capable organizations out there that 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 um, are convening at the World Economic Forum and, and we want to be one of those not just convene we want to be one of those conveners. Oh I would love to hear your thoughts on the role of partnerships and a, a community like the Global Health Equity Network in how we can expand the mission of what we're doing at labs. Yeah well uh, first of all um, this is a major problem and uh, a global problem um, and we alone cannot solve this. Uh, but we have an idea that I think we're excited about, and which is unique in its own way. Um, and being able to uh, present that to a broader group of people who are also interested achieves two things. First, it achieves visibility, that we're there trying to do things, um, and therefore... Um, um, it, uh, it brings in other partners, potentially, because they're interested too. But it also uh, teaches us, because when we talk about it and have a conversation with other people who are interested, new ideas are generated. And new uh, tweaks to our thinking are, uh, are created, which makes the whole process better. So uh, in other words, um, you simply expand uh, by an order of magnitude 
uh, the connection points that you have from which you can build your idea. That, that should be the core of it. And then, of course, because you're in an environment where you've got real decision makers, you've got people with uh, authority, um, you can actually accelerate the process of, uh, of delivery of care to many countries and, and then adjust it according to their own unique needs. So I do think that a forum like that is extremely important and I think you'll learn yourself, you'll grow yourself, the team will grow, uh, and I think you'll make a difference much more quickly. Uh, the visibility uh, does make a difference in something like this. It takes a lot of partners to come together. And you bet. <laughs> With that, thank you so much for not just today and sharing the story of labs, but really all of your mentorship and guidance over the last 10 years and excited about the future ahead. Great. Thank you, Richika. It's great. Thank you.